Hello students, welcome back to our Chemistry 1510 video notes. In this video, let's talk about nuclear structure and isotopes. So let's first, as we discuss isotopes, define two um, big words that we're going to need to know. So let's talk about what the mass number is and what an atomic number is. So a mass number is going to be the total number of protons and neutrons in a nucleus. So let's change my color and write total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So when we look at the atomic number, this is the number of protons for that atom or element. When we consider the periodic table, if we had something like hydrogen, there's a number one in the upper left or right hand corner. That number one is the atomic number, the number of protons. So we can come back up to here and say that each element is defined by the number of protons in the nucleus. If that number of protons changes, then the identity of the element changes. So if you added a proton, you don't have hydrogen anymore. Now that you have two protons, you have helium. So when we look at this um, idea of mass number and atomic number, we usually set these up in a format known as atomic notation. Some people will call it um, maybe isotopic notation, but they're going to have the same general format. What's going to occur is up here on the top, A is going to be your mass number. And then Z down here is going to be your atomic number. So the top number here is the protons plus neutrons. The bottom number here is just the protons. X is where you would put the element symbol. So, if we look at an example, we see that we have boron, because B is for boron. Boron always has five protons. And then that 11 indicates the number of protons and neutrons. So if we were find, trying to figure out just the number of neutrons, we would take 11 minus five and get six to figure out that this isotope of boron has six neutrons. So let's do some questions. How many protons and neutrons are there in neon 22? So we already know that the number of protons is 10 because that's listed down here. In order to figure out the number of neutrons, we have to do a little bit of a subtraction. We have to take 22 minus 10 to get 12. So for uranium-235, we know that uranium has an atomic number of 92 because that's on the periodic table and it's also listed here. In order to figure out the uh, number of neutrons, you take your 235, you subtract 92, and you get 143. For this final question, it's a little bit different, where now it's asking you what the identity is of element X. Right? There's no X on the periodic table. And so it's saying, figure out what the element symbol is for this. So what you would need to do is recognize that number 27 here is the atomic number. that the atomic number equals the number of protons and find number 27 on the periodic table. So I believe that we are looking at cobalt. I say that because I do not have a periodic table in front of me. So 
um, when we look at isotopes, what we're going to recognize is that your isotopes are going to have the same number of protons, yet they're going to have differing numbers of neutrons, which is going to make their mass number different. Because what I just highlighted up here is the mass number. So when we look at our isotopes, we saw one way to write them, which was up here. The other way to write them in a different notation is to write out the name of the element, a dash, and then the mass number. So again, this is the protons plus the neutrons. This way is uh, not as redundant as the last way, right? In the last way, you were putting in essentially extra information because you were putting in the number of protons, which you didn't necessarily need because you could have just looked at where boron is on the periodic table. So this way down here includes less information and it requires the reader to maybe look up um, a little bit more and have that periodic table handy. So why don't you take a moment and pause and see if you can fill out this sheet. Once you're ready, we can come back and we can talk about some answers. So again, pause, fill out the sheet, and see how you do. So we'll be back in a moment. I'm going to pause as well. All right, so it sounds like you're ready to resume, and when we um, go through a couple of these. I just want to say sorry for not realizing number one and two were repeats of number three and four. Um, so for this first one here, uh, I have an answer there for you. And um, students tend to do quite well with those. I kept number four instead of crossing it off because it includes electrons. So I just want you to recognize that you have the same number of electrons as you do protons because that's what makes it something that's neutral. Sometimes when you get down to here for five and six, people get a little confused because they think isotopes are kind of like singular. Um, but when we talk about isotopes, um, it's kind of, I guess, like talking about siblings, right? So you would say, you'd look at two people and say, are they siblings, yes or no? You can't look at one person and say, is this a sibling? And you'd be like, of who, of what? Um, so, we are nitrogen and nitrogen, nitrogen 14, nitrogen 15 isotopes of each other? Yes. They have different number of neutrons. They have the same number of protons. Are nitrogen 14 and carbon 14 isotopes of each other? No, because they're not the same element. You have to have the same number of protons there. So then why don't you pause again and make sure that you have the same answers as me here for this table. One thing that I do want to note is this line that's drawn here is not actually a thing. I just couldn't figure out how to make word uh, work without that line. So I left it in there. So we typically do not draw that line as a notation. So why don't you pause me for another moment, compare some answers, and then you can come back and we can talk about what an ion is. So now that you're ready to come back and talk about an ion, uh, let's talk about those protons one more time. Remember that we said protons have a positive charge and electrons have a negative charge. So atoms or elements that are neutral are going to have the same number of protons as they do electrons, which is what we saw up here, right? If this is your number of protons, and this is your number of electrons because we were talking about a neutral oxygen here. So then if we discuss an ion, an ion is where your protons and your electrons do not cancel one another out. So for example, if we look at something like, ooh, what's an easy one? Let's do lithium. So if we look at lithium that has a positive charge, the lithium with a positive charge is going to have still three protons because that's what defines it as lithium, but it's going to have one less electron, so it's going to have two electrons. 
if we compare that to an atom that we've looked at before, fluorine, and turn it into fluoride ion, remember we said fluorine has nine protons. Because your fluorine here has a negative charge, that means we added an additional electron, so we have 10 electrons. You just have to be cautious here about the whole adding negative things. That sometimes throws people off. So that's enough for this video. When we come back, we'll finish up the um, rest of, I believe, chapter two, uh, which is going to be atomic mass. As always, thank you for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.